Welcome, Douglas Wilson. Good evening. Um, my story begins in 1999. Uh, a group of 10 of us pile into two economy cars to drive to the middle of a cornfield outside of Joshua, Texas. In the cars were a lapsed Jew, a rabid atheist, a devout Catholic, a Catholic victim, his words, an agnostic or several agnostics who really don't know what their religion is, and me, a Southern Baptist ministerial student dropout. So we knew that we were going to this cornfield to a Muslim cemetery. Each one of us were given a rosary, and only three of us really knew what a rosary was about. We waited 40 days to go visit our friend who had died. And this is mostly his story. Mohammed, or Momo as we called him, Mohammed from Morocco, Momo, came to the United States when he was in high school with his slightly older sister and his father, who had been a government official in a high-ranking family in Morocco in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, but apparently something had happened and his father was no longer in favor of the new government. So when um, Momo got to the United States, he assimilated rather quickly. He became just like the other Americans. Um, but he always had a cloud hanging over his head in that his father was seeking political asylum. And political asylum takes a long time to achieve. And you have to prove multiple ways that you could be harmed by living in your home country. So after eight years, um, Mohammed's older sister had married and she had become an American citizen. Momo had respected his father so much that he would not come out of the closet for fear of shaming his father and his father's family. He wanted to respect the fact that his father had risked his entire life to bring his two remaining uh, young children to a better life. When Momo's father died, Momo was able to come out as a gay man. He met my friend Gus and they moved in together. It seemed like Momo had gotten everything that he'd wanted. And they were happy for about six months. Momo got a letter from the immigration office. Because his immigration status was tied to his father's um, application for political asylum, Momo no longer had status. And he was told that he'd been living in the United States for over eight years illegally, and he had six months to go back to Morocco. I can't imagine the amount of fear that would encompass someone told that they would have to go back to a homeland that they don't rem really remember other than some of the stories of their father. One night he cried because he knew that as an out gay man, and he wasn't just out, he was out. <laughs> no one would mistake him for a straight man. He knew 
that the moment he stepped off the plane in Morocco, he could be dragged through the streets, publicly humiliated, castrated, or put in prison for his, the rest of his life. He made some calls to his extended family to see if uh, they would allow him to live there. His cousins, his aunts, his uncles declined. They had heard through his older sister that Momo was gay and he was not welcome in his family. Gus, my friend, my close friend, his 19-year-old sister offered to marry Momo. But he knew that he would ruin her life if it was always tied to him. So he declined the offer. Because he was an illegal immigrant, he was not employable. His, he was able to work contract labor as a taxi driver. About two weeks before his deportation notice, Momo dropped off his last fare at the airport. He, he took the gun that he held underneath the seat for his own protection as he drove, and he shot himself in the head. For him, the shame of suicide was less than the shame of going back to a country where he could be tortured and he had no family. So back to the beginning of the story. This fruit salad of religions drove 60 miles south of Dallas to the Muslim cemetery in the middle of a cornfield. The reason it was in the middle of a cornfield was because no place in the area would sell the um, would sell land to the Muslims. We get there, and there are two unmarked graves that are fairly recent. We, we call Momo's sister to find out which of the two they are. She didn't know. She'd been there once. It was the middle of the cornfield in Joshua, Texas. She called the imam, and he told us what he thought the two of them, which of the two graves were Momo's. Two of the people that I didn't mention earlier were close friends of the rest of us, were a Wiccan priest and priestess. They did a dance with incense and sage over the, over the grave that we were pretty sure was Muhammad's. Then we began the 81 prayers that are the Catholic Rosary. And for those of you who are not Catholic, it's a while. <laughs> but it is remarkably meditative. For someone who has not, had not at that time meditated, the rhythm of the prayer brought us all closer to each other, to the spirit, and to our friend. At the end of the rosary, Gus chopped off the, the petals of two black roses, an homage to the Adams family, and buried it underneath some of the loose earth with the rope that he and Momo had used in personal times. <laughs> we looked up and over the corn stalks a black cloud came rolling closer and closer. By the time we got to our cars our tears were 
were added to the tears of God as he cried for all of us in that Muslim cemetery outside Joshua, Texas. Thank you.